Oh, Reddit. Oh, my gosh. It happened this past week. This guy went on Reddit and he said, I have found evidence of a flying saucer on Google Maps. And he posted it online. Then he asked everyone on the forum, did I just see a photo of a UFO on Google Street View? I mean, is this really what happened? Well, you know what? It kind of does look like a UF type aircraft over a house here in the United States. Until you look a little bit closer, then the truth becomes apparent. It's actually... Um, Bird poop on the camera lens, yeah. Interdimensional bird turds, that's what it was all right. Reminds me of a very long opera about UFOs and aliens. It was called Aria 51. <laughs> yes, and you see, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, just an example of the fun that we have here week after week. It's America's largest show about all things digital. We talk about the gadgets and gizmos and living the best digital life ever. You can find us on 420 top stations from coast to coast, streaming in your favorite radio app and streaming whenever you get the urge to listen to the show or watch the show over at getkim.com. And I'd also like to say thank you to the American Forces Network Radio that serves more than 375,000 American servicemen and women in 175 countries and 200 ships at sea. Because after all, you have tapped into the Kim Commando Show because after all, I'm America's beloved digital goddess, Kim Commando, here with you once again. I know. Sometimes I think so. Just kidding. Hey, our T-Mobile unlimited listener line is open at one 825 5254 I'm sure you have at least a few questions about something digital that I can lend a hand to. All right, let's get started with five things that you need to know about tech that's happening right now. Now, we're still learning more and more about this global ransomware attack that happened just a few days ago, obviously timed as IT professionals were starting that long 4th of July weekend. But let me try to put it into perspective. Now, this latest ransomware attack is the single biggest in history, targeting software firm Kasaya, which provides IT support and services for tens of thousands of companies. Now, behind the attack is the same Russian link gang that hit JBS Me Processing, and they got an $11 million payout on Memorial Day. So, see what's happening? Ransomware and the money, right? Right now, I heard that it was like $70 million in Bitcoin because so many companies are paralyzed. And the gang is, they say, we can give you a sort of a universal unlock key, but it's going to cost you $70 million. Whoa. Okay. Now, the FBI says that the attack is so big that it can't respond to every victim. Mm, isn't that nice? As for President Biden, he says he's going to, quote, respond, whatever that means, if someone can prove that Russia is truly behind the attack. In other words, for right now, we're on our own. So for more about this ransomware attack, we have a whole bunch of information details over at commando.com. But I also am putting together this very special initiative. I've spoken about it just a few times here on the show. It's a great website called stopandthink.us. Now there, if you ever get hit with ransomware, we have resources. If you own a company, you run a company, we have a downloadable printable file so that you can put it in the break room to remind people what, ransom with, what ransomware is, pardon me, and then how they should respond to it. But there's also that mantra that I want everyone to remember, and I want you to say it along with me as I do. Stop and think, don't click that link. So anytime that you get something in your inbox and you're like, oh, do I have to respond to this? They say they're, uh, they've got a video of me doing something nasty. They say that uh, I lost a package, that they lost my order. I got to pay this invoice, whatever it may be. Just remember, stop and think, don't click the link. There's always a sense of urgency. There's always saying, we need you to do this right now. Okay, no, stop and think. Don't click that link and help me spread the word. There are now social media sharing buttons on that site. Stop and think. Don't click that link. Stop and think. Us is the website. All right, number two, let's talk about cell phone cancer. There have been so many studies over the years about the potential health impacts of cell phone radiation, right? Well, new research from UC Berkeley, you really have to listen to this. They say that there really is a link between cell phone use and increased risk of tumors, particularly on the right side of your brain. I have said this, I don't know for how many years, how many years, maybe 15, 20 years I've been saying this. As part of the study, Berkeley researchers looked at the stats from nearly 50 other studies conducted all over the world. They found that if a person uses a cell phone for more than 1,000 hours over a 10-year period, the risk of a brain tumor development increases by 60%. That's humongous. Let's break it down. 
an average of 17 minutes of use per day. That's all that is. They also show the usage of a cell phone for 10 or more years doubled the risk of brain tumors. So the bottom line here is that you don't want to put this cell phone anywhere near your head, but really you don't want to put it anywhere near your body. That means taking it out of your sports bra, ladies, taking it out of your pockets. I'm guilty of that too. But when I read this, I spread this news to everybody in my family. Can you use a headset? Yes, you can. Okay. But you don't want to put this thing up to your head. No, none of that. Number three, another day, another lawsuit filed against Google. Yeah, this time it's about Google Play. It involves 36 states and the District of Columbia. The key issue is Google's plan to exist in rules where developers have to pay 30% of sales for the Google Play Store. Kind of sounds familiar, doesn't it? Yeah, that was Epic Games Fortnite. Now, Google says, oh, we're going to be working with them. We don't really understand it. But, you know, here's the deal is that when you have both political parties and citizens alike saying that enough is enough, you can be sure that there's a big change on the way to big tech. Number four, don't forget about Google's other bad habits. A big revelation about how Google and others would allow human contractors to listen to recorded audio clips, you know, to improve the product. That was a couple of years ago. And now you have to opt in when you want to have your voice recorded. But if you're not sure if you have or you haven't, there are easy ways to check and delete what's been recorded. Just go to this site, myactivity.google.com. If you haven't been there for a while, you ought to go there anyway, because then you can see what exactly they're tracking about you. Myactivity.google.com. Now, coming up later this hour, we're going to talk about a Google gadget that might not just be recording audio when it hears its wake word. And if you've never deleted any files, let me tell you, you're never going to hear the end of it. Finally, number five, you can live forever, but just not the way you may have thought. Another sign that truth is becoming stranger than fiction. This time it has to do with how your family would cope with your loss by turning you into a chatbot. That's right. It was a patent filed by Microsoft. It would use artificial intelligence to mimic a real person. You would feed the AI with someone's personal details, social data like images, voice data, social media posts, email, texts, any written letters. Then AI could potentially mimic that person's personality to the point that you could actually have a conversation with a chatbot that was almost like their real deal, a relative, a friend a celebrity, maybe a historical figure, you name it. Now, there's a lot to consider, of course, when you're creating a chatbot of somebody who has died. I mean, would you be comfortable having an AI conversation with someone who's nobody here? A website called Hereafter AI allows you to record your life stories and answer questions. Another company called Replica uh, has a digital companion that learns how to mimic you. I mean, you know, just imagine chatbots, chatbots in the future. Maybe they would want to organize an African themed party. Those bots want to party. <laughs> Get it? Bots want to. Okay. All right. That one, that one did not go over well. Uh, just a quick reminder that you can always drop me your questions through the website too. I know you can leave them on social media, but that gets so overwhelming. Uh, just go ahead and send me an email through the site because I do read every single one there. That's commando.com. At the bottom of every single page, there's a link that says contact us. Hey, how about we start this hour with Teresa in beautiful Anchorage, Alaska. Hi, Teresa. Hi. How are you? Oh, doing well. What's going on? Um, I am looking for a sturdy, very easy to use dumb phone for my husband. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what kind of phones does he have now? And obviously, it's too much for him. What doesn't? What does it do that he well, doesn't want? Well, I don't to do? even know what the brand new one was. We just got, and that it's a flip phone. Uh, we just bought it cash. It was only sixty dollars. Is what we could find in a hurry because his other one. But she had a Caterpillar phone that uh, we don't even know how long he's had it, uh, and he still had troubles using it. But it wasn't a smartphone. It just had touch buttons, uh, had the normal you know, left-right menu, uh, scroll-through-back sure. type buttons and stuff like that, and the, and the wheel on it and stuff like that. And uh, even with that phone, which was fairly basic, uh, I'd come home and he'd say, there's somebody who texted me. I don't know what this is. He can't find text. He doesn't do text. He has literacy issues and that. And, you know, I've got a voicemail in here. I can't figure out what it is or how to get it out and things like that uh, and everything. So, uh, and whatnot. It, it, but it has lasted a while, but it just finally wore out because he does construction. I was just going to say, because you said it has to be durable. So he's in the construction industry then? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
All right. Well, so we want a basic phone that's durable, right? Mm -hmm. uh, probably waterproof, shockproof, all that other good stuff. Oh, yeah. And we don't want to spend $1,500 for it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 yeah. And he doesn't he doesn't do touch screens and that because his hands are so calloused he can't make them work. <laughs> wow. That you know what? I've never heard that before, but that totally makes sense, huh? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um well you got yourself a burly man, didn't you? Whoa. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> man. Um my, my, I have short honeydew lists. Because it gets it done. That's awesome. That's awesome. I mean, you know, I'm just thinking like I was just like comparing your husband to mine. Mine walks around in a suit jacket with a hanky. You know what I mean? So it's like. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so here's the deal. There's a, a company by the name of Plum. Okay, and they make rugged flip phones. So, uh, so it's something that he can you know deal with, and it's shockproof and it's waterproof, and they're not very expensive. I think they're like seventy bucks. Um, and they're unlocked. Yes, and they are unlocked, uh, okay. and it has a military-grade shock proof is what I'm thinking that might be it. It also has a couple of other things. It has an SOS button, um, which I always thought was interesting on, on to have a phone, to ha actually have an SOS button right there. I mean, we all know that we can hit the side of our iPhone five times in order to bring up 911, but this just has a simple button that he could just press if, in fact, he ever needs that. But it's got a fairly big screen and a keypad. So it should be easy for him to use. Um, what I'll do is I'll post a link to it over inside the Q&A forum. Uh, that's over at commando.com, of course. And so that this way, in case mm -hmm. you want to check it out, Teresa, and in case anybody else who's listening says, you know, that's something that I might be interested in as well. And that's inside the commando community. And so I had somebody send me a note the other day. like, you know, I don't understand what you're talking about the Q&A forum. Well, if you go to commando, if you go to community.commando.com or commando.com slash community, whichever one you want to do. And then over on the left-hand side, there's a nav bar. And the Q&A forum is where you can drop us questions and we answer them. And it also gives me a chance to put some notes, some show notes for you guys and gals so that if I mention something, you're not trying to Google it. Because I am thoroughly convinced that anytime you Google anything, you are at least, oh, I don't know, three degrees away from some porno site. It just seems to be that's the way it is. So anytime at all that you hear me mention the Q&A forum, just know that's at commando.com slash community. And on the left-hand side, there's a nav bar that says Q&A forum. Now, you don't have to be a member to read anything, but in case you want to post, it's going to cost you a few bucks a month. All right, NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system, is offering a one-of-a-kind financing program for those of you who are ready to graduate from QuickBooks to NetSuite today. So if you're sitting there running your business on QuickBooks, whether you've got 10 employees or 10,000 employees, you definitely want to check this out. But you want to go to this one site, netsuite.com slash Kim. That's netsuite.com slash Kim, netsuite.com slash Kim. All right, think about all the devices that you use every single day. Your phone, your tablet, your streaming boxes, your smart thermostats, your smart speakers, your smart garage door opener. I mean, it really goes crazy. Now, some of these devices communicate with each other, but there's also a setting on your TV that you may not know about. And I'm just going to tell you what it is, and you don't have to remember because I'm going to tell you more about it, but it's HDMI CEC, Consumer Electronics Control, and allows communication to happen between your TV and devices connected to it using HDMI ports. And so you could have one remote to power your TV, your Roku and more. You could control a Blu-ray menu from that same remote. You can adjust the volume of your soundbar. Um, you have to find out if your TV does support this new standard, but it could buy a different name for different manufacturers. So in case you want to learn more about it, because you want to up your tech know-how, right? Head over to commando.com. And then at the top of the page, there's a link that says Kim's show, and that's where you want to go. Stay right where you are. It's coming up later on the show. I've got to you about, tell you about a trending scam with your smart assistant. You're on the Kim Commando show. All right. A few days ago, there was a big warning that was issued about a major problem in pretty much, yeah, all versions of Windows. It was called Print Nightmare. Mike, I think we need to have some music like Print Nightmare, bum, 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 bum. Uh, security advisor said that the flaw, there you go, 
It was, that was much better than my bum, 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 Micah, by the way. Um, there's a problem in the Windows print spooler service. Hackers could remotely run code to install programs like malware. They could delete data. They could create new accounts. <laughs> and it's not just a proof of concept theory. It was a critical, critical flaw that was being actively exploited. As a matter of fact, here in the studios, I mean, the printers just didn't work because our IT geniuses said, nope, until Windows has a fix for this, that's just the way it is. It must be a big issue because Microsoft is even rolling out a patch for Windows 7 and they stopped security updates for that about a year and a half ago. So we've got all the details about Print Nightmare over at commando.com, including directions for patching your Windows PC. You need to do that 7, 8, 10 and also Windows Server. Now, since the patch was released, other researchers say that they found another exploit that could circumvent this so-called fix. So if Microsoft finds that to be the case, expect another patch to fix the problem with this patch that went to fix the other problem with the other patch. Yes, we'll keep you posted at commando.com. Uh, Roger in Pensacola, Florida. Welcome to the show today, Rog. What's going on? Hey there. Hey, Kim. Uh, enjoy your show. I'm a long-time listener, first-time caller. Oh, well, thank you. What took you so long? Why have you been ghosting me like this all these years? Well, hey, thanks for taking my call. Uh, How can I help you? Hey, we... Uh, we enjoy listening to your show. Pick up a lot of uh, a lot of techno tips and knowledge. Uh, thanks for sharing your expertise with us on the radio every week. Uh, we got a we got a special uh, I don't know special little niche. I guess I need you to help me with here. Okay. Uh, I'm in the truck transportation business and uh, been in that business since 1988, and we're kind of almost conducting our business the same way that we did. Way back in the nineties, I guess, uh, uh, business comes in, uh, you know, via telephone, email, and we're still jotting it down on paper tablets, you know. Uh, and I would like, well, I'm thinking that you're probably going to know there's a some kind of tablet program or app somewhere that uh, we could convert from using the paper tablets and switch it over to a, a program, a PC-based program. So, I so Roger, if anybody would know, you would know. Well, thank you for your confidence in me, sir. The, um, now, when, when you're saying like paper tablets, are these, I mean, are there specific fields that I guess you fill, that you fill out in each one, right? It's Different, basically, yeah, yeah. Kind, kind of. I mean, you know, it's just we've got our little format that we use. but uh, So explain to me what's on the format. Uh, basically, it's just a, it's similar to a, just it's just your ones that you go to a uh, office supply store and buy oh, you okay. know, the, the, okay. the tablets, you know. Okay. And uh, and then we we kind of just write it up in a in a manner that you Makes know we've kind of gotten accustomed to. Okay, and that's so, that's uh, and see, and that's what I was asking about the fields, and I probably didn't communicate properly. What I was meaning is like when when an order comes in or you need to make a delivery that there are certain things that you need to know every single time, right? I mean, the date, who's in charge, the vehicle, what's what's in the delivery, what you're dropping off, things of that nature. So so Correct. It, so so in order to get you off of the paper tablets as you said, you know, you buy it at the office supply store, which you know, we definitely need to do that is that what, what you can do is you can automate this. And by automation, it could be as simple as putting up for, setting up forms, electronic forms, and then your employees have, they're carrying around say a, a 50 to $100 Android tablet. They pull up a Google doc that has these forms in there and then they just fill out the form and then it gets saved on the server or in the cloud rather in the cloud and so everybody could have access to that and then they can also assign different parts of that form to somebody else to complete but now now you have an electronic record of everything that you can go back and search and reference and we do have a we do have a proprietary software that we use that all this information gets entered into but I'm kind of wanting to streamline the process a bit where we're not having a, a paper tablet that we're passing around the office. Yeah, you exactly. Know, when, you know how it works. You know, when, sure. I, when I have it, you need it. And <laughs> well, and that's the way, of course that is, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So what you could do is uh, and we're going to replace that paper tablet 
Okay. And maybe not go to the extent, because you, like you said, you're using proprietary software for a lot of that stuff. But whatever you would have on that paper tablet, you would create a Google document, okay? And that Google document could be accessible by anybody. And so instead of me carrying around a paper tablet, I would carry around an Android tablet and I'd make those notes, whatever you want me to make or whatever I'm doing in, in a Google doc, okay? That's in the cloud. And then I, and then if you need access to that, is that I can share that Google document with you and then you would have access to it to make notes, to comment, things like that. It's actually fairly simple to uh, to collaborate. And that's what the term that we use is to collaborate on workflow processes. And then because the Google Doc is there stored, remember in the cloud, is that you would have access to it and anybody from wherever they are, they don't have to even be in your place of business. Okay, yeah, because we're all on PC. So, uh, uh, yeah, I'm just looking for something that it would be accessible to everyone and uh, typically or preferably a online app or program. Yeah, so you don't even need an app or a program. You're just going to sign up for Google Docs, you know, okay. go and make that part of your account. And just try try it once, and I think you'll understand what I'm talking about. Because this is one of those things, Roger, that once you try it, you're like, oh, gosh, now I get it. Because, you know, I fought for years against using Google Docs. I was like, oh, no, we're using Microsoft Office. This is so great. Okay. But many years ago, we switched to using Google Docs throughout the organization. And it really makes things a lot easier because, like, for example, I mean, we could be working on a cryptocurrency book. This is our example. And then I may write some things in it, Ali. Uh, Amber Reeves goes in and she puts on all these great pieces of art. Ben will add something. Mark will edit it. Uh, you know, Jeremy has something to say or maybe John does. And so, but it becomes this living, breathing document that everybody can have input on and then can see the changes that other people have made and then make comments and ask somebody to elaborate on this. Uh, it really does, does, does do wonders for your business. So Roger, give that a shot. And if for some reason that doesn't work, I want you to know you can always give me a call back and we'll take it to the next level. But I think the solution is as easy as using a Google Doc. You can use it on the PC, as you mentioned, that you guys are already using. And thank you for your call, and thanks for listening for so many years. Uh, let's go ahead and do our digital life hack. This week is brought to you by Simply Safe. When Simply Safe's home securities founders, Chad and Eleanor Lawrence, designed their first security system in their kitchen, they did it for a very personal reason. Their friends had just had their home broken into. They were struggling to find a security system that was simple to set up and would make them feel safe again. Now, making people feel safe is what Simply Safe has been doing ever since that moment 15 years ago. It's a passion to protect people not only drives every engineering detail in its products, but it motivates every single interaction with its customers, whether it's a fire, a burglary, a medical emergency, or even just when you're setting up the system. There is always someone there who has your back to keep you safe and to make sure that you feel safe. And that's why I chose Simply Safe to protect my own home. I know that if anything happens, their team is there to help every single step of the way. To learn more about how Simply Safe can help protect you and your family and your home, you have to go to the special address, simplysafekim.com. Customize your system, and when you're there, you can get a free HD security camera. And you also get a 60-day risk-free trial. So there's nothing to lose, folks. That address, simplysafekim.com, you're going to get a free HD security camera, simplysafekim.com. This week's digital life hack is for those of us that um, don't want to use the word cheap. I would like to say that we are thrifty. That's right. Because the best software normally costs a lot of money. But what if you could get it for free? So like Microsoft Office. Sure. It's the gold standard. Well, what if you can't afford it? Uh, we recommend LibreOffice. You get six programs, Writer and Press Calc, which just works like Word, PowerPoint, and Excel. Uh, for a free Text Maker. Uh, there's also a solid Microsoft Word alternative called Free Office. Um, what about Excel alternatives? There's Free Office uh, Plan Maker. And if you can't afford Photoshop, there's a great program called GIMP or Pixel XR. That's actually a really good program. Free audio editing software. That's right, Audacity. It's amazing. And you can even snatch up free video editing software for a long time. I know we always talked about Windows Movie Maker. It was one of the most popular 
uh, ones out there, but it kicked the bucket in 2017. So many people moved on to expensive alternatives like Premiere Pro or Sony Vegas. Well, what about a free one? Yes. The best uh, open source alternative is called Shotcut. And we've got links to this as well as links to all the other programs that I mentioned free for the taking. Head over to commando.com, of course. That's K-O-M-A-N-D-O.com. When you're there, hit the link that says Kim Show. Okay, there's a scam I need to tell you about. Maybe a security problem, maybe either a little bit of or. There's a smart assistant that could be secretly recording you right now. I'm gonna tell you how to make it stop. And of course, we have more of your phone calls still to come this hour of the Kim Commando Show. Uh, let's see, Pat in Chicago, Illinois. Hi, Pat. Hi, I am so excited to be able to thank you. Oh, what happened? Well, uh, I had contacted your show about the issues I was having with my website that I wasn't getting any uh, support from uh, my host uh, and your your fabulous uh, staff. Uh, I don't know how they did it, but they rescued my website. <laughs> they, they got it back for you. I re You know what? John and Jeremy were telling you about this. It was quite the challenge. It was quite a challenge for them. It must have been really hard for you. I'm glad that you reached out to us. Uh, I, it's funny you mentioned the word challenge because I was going to comment on the fact I, I'm, I'm in no size, shape, or form any kind of expert about uh, tech stuff, but I knew it was difficult for them. That much I knew, and the fact that they did it, I, I just, I just really found amazing. Well, and it was really, you know, it was really, they're very, both of them are very gracious with their time and their knowledge. And it's as an example, you know, so you know, Pat, it's of our random acts of kindness that we do here at the show. So from time to time, people will call in and it's obvious that if I just tell you, go here, do this, do that, right? You're like, what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't really know what I do. So that's where I, I bend John and Jeremy's arms and I say, listen, listen, come on. I don't actually bend their arms. They're always, always happy to help. But what do you think was the greatest thing that they did? Um, from what I understand, it's being able to wrestle the, in, the website away from where it was sitting um, and not losing it, you know, recreating the website, recreating, you know, uh, being on, on C-Channel, rescuing my uh, email addresses. I just... I just know that was that was not easy. I am just like so impressed. You know, I'm I'm a, I'm a senior citizen and I'm a senior citizen junkie, a computer junkie. I you know I just love tech stuff. I was born in the wrong generation. What can I tell you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, I'm, I'm glad that they were really again, Pat. I'm really happy and so pleased that they were able to lend a hand because it can get very difficult and. Uh, you know, especially if you have a website and what happened with Pat is that she couldn't contact the hosting company. She couldn't contact who made the website. She couldn't con And then she's this website sitting there on the web and she's like, now, what do I do? How do I get to it? And it really requires some investigative work with people that really know what they're doing because, you know, the worst thing we can do is put somebody like you, Pat, on the web, and then you get taken advantage of and you get scanned and people steal money for you. And that's something that we definitely never, ever want to do. So, uh, again, these are called our random acts of kindness. And I don't think that you find anybody else in talk radio right now uh, doing any type of random act of kindness other than those of us here at the Kim Commando Show. But let's give a big shout out not only to Pat for giving a call, but also to John and Jeremy for lending a hand because you guys are truly the IT geniuses. Hey, stay right where you are. Coming up, we have a smart assistant that could be secretly recording you, and we're going to tell you exactly how to make that stop here on the Kim Commando Show. All right, it's been well known for a long time that speakers and smart speakers, that they are kind of listening, kind of, when they shouldn't be. So to activate Google, you just have to say something like, hey, Google, or okay, Google. But during a recent hearing, Google admitted that it could listen in and have listened in on users' private conversations without the wake word being used. That was in India. Very Google. It's another reason why it's important to know exactly what Google has been recording and for how long. So we've got all the steps to check. Delete those recordings. Just head over to the official homepage of the Kim Commando Show. That's, of course, K-O-M-A-N-D-O.com. And when you're there, hit the link that says Kim Show right at the top. And do me a favor, while you're there, sign up for the free newsletters, because this way you're always up to date. Stay right where you are. We have another hour coming up. 
that you definitely don't want to miss here on the West Star Multimedia Network. Hey, thanks for watching a past episode of my national radio show. That's why it's called The Kim Commando Show Rewind. Now, to get the entire show all three hours when it airs live, or you can get on demand, head over to getkim.com and you can become a member of the Commando community. There are a ton of perks aside from just the show. You get free ebooks, a place to get answers to your tech questions, and more of me. So come on, what are you waiting for? Click that link right now and become a member. And thank you.